and this is off the press welcome to it this morning we are going to be taking a look at the national dailies as we always do here on this program with me to do so and to make sense of it is dr femi itowade okay public affairs analyst and if good, good morning and if also policy analyst good morning Amaka. good to have good you here. today and you too if you look at this one that i'm learning work from <laughs> All right, good to have you both this morning. We shall begin with the Nation newspaper, and I believe it will be displayed. Um, the Nation newspaper says, Army General forfeits uh, seized $376,000 uh, case for February the 24th. And that story, thank you, it's already displayed. It's on page 41 of the Nation newspaper. And more outrage over killing of cleric student. Eight soldiers die in ambush. That's also on page 43. As you can see, it displayed there. Kalu Ndidi, tip eagles to lead group C. Something on sports for you there on page 47. And then the big story for the nation is Tinubu Amoteko, not threat to national unity. You can see that uh, displayed. And just at the top of that, you see 18 die as Lassa fever spreads to nine states. And that's worrisome. That story is on the front page, but it's continued on page 44. And uh, U.S. travel ban speculative mm -hmm. says presidency on page 39. And seven killed in Lagos court war on page 42 of the nation newspaper. Uh, state government cancels battle over $2.6 billion Paris club refund on the front page there. You can see it is continued on page 44. And finally, $1.2 billion uh, Malabo deal. Adoke arraignment today um, on page 40 and laborers to die by hanging on page 5. Where do we begin this morning? Let me start with you, Dr. Femi. Wow. There's so many st stories yeah. popping up. Yes, but I'll quickly comment on the, the Ashiwaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Um, when the Amoteku saga started, the news and the noise everywhere, some quarters said he hasn't said anything, mm -hmm. but he broke his silence yesterday, which was very good. Yeah, and I think he, I agree with his stand, is part of what we've been saying. Uh, that yeah, Amotekun is a good initiative, mm -hmm. but the process of his bat or on which foundation is it formed and the arrangement. He actually mentioned in his uh, press release that the, uh, the governors, mm -hmm. good initiative, and they met with the security chiefs and the Nigerian police, but they missed out in having proper discussion with the AGF, mm -hmm. which is what has become the uproar because it was the AGF uh, statement that everybody is now running with that Amotekun is illegal. But what he said that is very key is for the governors and the AGF to sit and, and then dialogue, dialogue mm. which is very key. Agree. All right. Uh, Ify, any intervention? On any, on any I mean, I'm just going to echo what uh, Doctor has just said as well. I, I actually agree with. Um, I, I, I read a bit of the statement as well, and I also think it's also good to look at it in uh, as in uh, in in parity with. Um, other laws that were, you know, during the historical period of Nigeria and looking at constitutional um, challenges that we've had regarding laws. Uh, we can look at Sharia law, example, that was practiced in, I think, Katina. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can also look at other, there are other, there's other, um, there's the other historical precedences that we can look at and also know that this can be solved, even though the due process was not followed. Yeah. Well, there's a way that um, all parties can come to an agreement. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about this uh, story on the front page. 18 die as Lassa fever spreads yeah. to nine states. Yeah. That's scary. This is a period, uh, unfortunately for us, for the big bug or the big virus. Mm -hmm. So obviously, anytime, every year, if you notice, around December, January, January. February, there are so many diseases and bugs running around. And this is not uh, an isolated uh, period as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we know the, about the coronavirus in, yes, in, in China. Yeah, in China, exactly. And we also know that um, that last has, has has been cyclical in terms of how it, when it when it features, you know, prominently mm -hmm. in Nigeria. So we're just trying to find ways to uh, try and ameliorate the system. Because mm -hmm. even Enugu State confirmed uh, in the news this morning that yeah. the, a woman, a seventy-five-year-old, died from. Let me just add to what she said. Mm -hmm. Over the years, in the last three, four years, like she said, we've had this issue of uh, bugs mm -hmm. around the same period. Why, why so, if I may ask, really? Well, uh, for me personally, as an environmentalist, I feel the major problem we have, mm -hmm. we have a sanitation problem. Mm 
True. And we cannot live and pussyfoot about it anymore. It has our environmental structure has to come from the local government. It should not be from top to bottom. It should be from bo bottom to top. What happens to this uh, uh, sanitation that used to happen on Saturdays? The, the, there was time when... Yeah, during the last... Um, yeah, yeah, the last how did administration, that thing disappear? Or is it still no, happening in some quarters? No, they're still debating it in Lagos whether to bring it back. Yeah, I think I it happens... Think it's, been, it's been around for mm. a yeah, it's while. Still, it's still happening in some places. It started around 1983 or 84 during the Buari Idiaba administration mm -hmm. that war against indiscipline mm -hmm. every last Saturday of the month. But the last administration in Lagos under uh, Governor Ambody uh, actually had a debate whether to shut the state down economically for those hours mm -hmm. on Saturdays, on one Saturday of the month, or should we have a culture of sanitation? We should have a culture of sanitation. Yeah, but, well, the, yeah. hope, I think the whole point of it initially, from, um, in terms of yeah, its origin, was to create, was, was to create that culture, culture yeah. of sanitation. Mm -hmm. yeah. But unfortunately, I think yeah. people see it as pejorative. Yeah. Yeah. They don't think of it as something that is actually beneficial to them because yeah. they feel like if business is at standstill and there's no discipline to clean your environment, then where, where are we going to start mm -hmm. from? Fantastic. And I'll go as far as to yeah. say that, even though doctor said that we were looking at it from bottom to top, which I totally agree with, I'd even go even further down to fundamentals. Yeah. Look at it from a private sector, from a home perspective. From a home perspective. How are you keeping your uh, oh. environment yeah. clean? Yeah. True. And if and if and if you are keeping your um, environment clean, government won't have to intervene to make sure these things are done for you. Mm -hmm. So it, it'll be it behoves us as individual citizens to yeah. ensure that our own environments are clean and where. Uh, where we call it, where we don't have uh, the ability to do a sp widespread cleaning, then we can get the government yeah. involved. So involved. Yeah. All right, so um, we'll move away from that um, story now. And more outrage over killing of cleric. And that story is the story of the Khan chairman who yeah. was killed in a gruesome way by the Boko Haram sect. Yeah. Do we want to have any intervention on that or move on in the interest of time? Well, he just he's just explaining how security problem in Nigeria is a big issue. Mm -hmm. And then we need to do drastic measures because that particular case, Boko Haram were asking for two million pounds while the church was able to raise fifteen million naira, which they rejected. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm still in process of Yes, negotiating. And the Boko Haram actually called or sent a message to the wife's phone. You called? Yeah. That they were That's going scary. to they were going to kill him on Saturday. Saturday. But they waited till Monday. It's really, really sad. Mm. We heard that they killed him by beheading him. Mm, that's unfortunate. We yeah. don't want to promote their mm. news, but again, yeah, if you want to say something, please well, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm happy with what, what he said, but I just wanted to just I don't I think we may we have passed it, but I just wanted to touch on the Paris Club issue. Oh yes, okay. yes, yeah. and also the idea that right now I'm sure we're all aware that the World Economic Forum is going on in Davos, and. Um, <laughs> and I just wanted to just mm. make sure that, that Africa was not really much much on the agenda this year and I can understand why that would be the case because if we're internally we're having a lot of uh, miscombobulation in terms of determining what is going on mm. it's, you know with uh, funds that have been dispersed for from the Paris Club mm. I mean from from that perspective I don't think that they are, really there's incent yeah, it mm. is disincentivizing them mm. from uh, further investing or further um, aid in Nigeria mm. I thank you for that intervention. We'll move on now to this day uh, newspaper and it says Lagos, Rivers and Aquabom Delta indebtedness list. That's on the front page. Uh, CBM policies will deepen competition among banks on page six of this day newspaper and federal government warns Nigerians as novel novel coronavirus spreads beyond China or just come and issue travel advisory. That's just as we battle with the Lassa fever here. Mm. That story is on the front page. You can see there is continued on page eight of this day newspaper. Tinubu breaks silence on Amotekon calls for dialogue. Uh, says security outfit not threat to national unity is on the front page there. Um, U.S. plans to expand travel restrictions to Nigeria and six others. Did anybody see that? Oh, wow, Mostly. that's actually kind yeah. of a very, very touchy subject because most people have a, a, a core of their relatives mm -hmm. in America or somewhere, you know, away. So it's interesting that Nigeria has now been put on the travel ban or travel list. Well, there are certain visas yeah, that will not be restricted. Yeah. Yes, will be restricted, but right. we're still waiting for... Uh, I will um, appeal to the US government. You are appealing? Yeah, I will appeal to them on one ground. Uh, what they have in um, Venezuela, where no political office holders can travel to the US, <laughs> they should keep that to Nigeria. <laughs> 
That's what we want. That's not, what I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna people. go I'm as not pretentious <laughs> as I, well, I don't. I, I don't think I even compare even though our worst politician with Maduro and the rest of them. I know, and right? Chavez, where well, yeah. we're not anywhere we, near where they are. We are, are worse than them. You think, I don't, you think I'm, I'm worse than Maduro? I'm you not think? a Venezuelan, but I'm a Nigerian. So, yes, so, so I'm gonna talk from where he's pinching me. Yeah, but you're okay. using a Venezuelan yeah. example. A contest that doesn't work. A contest does not necessarily involve us. No, I'm saying what they've done there in terms of not allowing their political leaders to go. That's what you want. That's what that's that's what you're asking. That's what I'm asking for. I don't. I, I think anyway. Let's not worry. Let's they're, they're going to, going to with this, but they're, uh, they're going to release the uh, list on Monday. So we'll, to because if they don't include that, the, the common people will suffer. No, no. The, I mean, before we start going over over their decision and, and assume it was a request. They are going. It's <laughs> well, interesting. To, I, I know they had the meeting. They other had other a meeting with. Um, I know. I know the um, the vice president had a meeting with the ambassador. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the last couple of days, mm -hmm. the American ambassador. I don't know. Maybe there was some kind of uh, they were trying to do some damage control. I don't uh, know. Th th there's already a statement, anyways, from the mm. presidency to say let's just hold on. because they didn't give details and they're right. still going to tell us how it's going to unfold. Let's, let's hope we're holding on for mm. them to do more in negotiation on, on, on their own part, especially from a, a um, immigration point of view. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. But like you said, it's a very touchy matter. So everybody's <laughs> there. I'm saying for, that's for the that. common man now. So where are we going? To? Yeah, but they should, yeah. Have, they should assist the common man and just put it on there. Maybe we'll write to him. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get to Trump on your behalf. All right, let's move on now. Um, I think basically th that's the only uh, story, new story. Well, there's also, no, there's something, yes. yes. Okay, yes. I mean, I'm just going to also just, the two things I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at the extension of the, st the uh, um, um, earlier story mm -hmm. on um, Paris Club uh, disbursements that were made on the federal level to states and how that is also trickling down to the debts, uh, the top them, um, states with the top, top uh, debt, debtors, yes. And we know that, and it's, uh, it's interesting to know that those states are actually, from an IGR perspective, as internally generated revenue perspective, yeah, yeah. they're actually the bigger, be, bigger yeah, earners. Yeah. So there must be some kind of, a, I mean, I don't know whether it's an arrangement or some kind of uh, relationship or of trust There's that has, that, yeah, that's unfolding that we have, we'll, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll cover in the, the next bottom. couple of days. Yeah. And also just looking at the CBN policies, and yeah. I'm just making What's a general commentary, <laughs> general commentary on the state of banks and banking and finance in Nigeria, mm -hmm. I, I actually will also feel that, uh, yes, it will deepen competition according to what is being said, but at the same time, I think that in the next five years that uh, the, the framework and structure of how we bank and how we are uh, financially included will change drastically mm -hmm. and forever. Mm -hmm. I agree so, with you. I mean, there are a lot of mm -hmm. issues with the way, you know, the the banks, banking system yeah. is mm. sometimes it's so frustrating to think of it even in the little matters apart from the you know huge policies mm. and all of that there are very other issues that affect individuals you know nigerians in terms mm. of our banking and the procedures like you said i hope that we'll see something better from now we're going to move away from that story <laughs> Femi. <laughs> i see your eyes still on it but we're moving away from it so okay. we'll go to the punch newspaper and it says Coronavirus fan health officers screen air passengers. Page Fantastic. 32. Yesterday, they actually issued a statement to say Nigerians should please comply when they want to screen you. Federal government awaits U.S. as Trump said to slam visa restriction on Nigeria. Nigerians won't be entitled to some types of visa, according to the report. And Northern Christians under insurgent siege. Uh, says Khan on page 11, already displayed there. Refineries posted 123.3 billion Naira loss in 10 months, according to NNPC. That story is on page 29 of the Punch newspaper. Adoke alleges persecution, battles 300 million Naira Malabu deal bribe charge on page 41. Travelers grown as internet hitches impede online bookings on page 29. Are we really uh, an e-country? I wonder. I will take a comment. Southwest governors back to Nebu. Afeni Ferry hits APC leader. That's on the front page there, but it's continued on page two. It's on page two, rather. Uh, it's on page two of the Punch newspaper. APC national leader takes neutral position on operation. Nebu's statement lacks substance, says the Yoruba Umbrella Group. A former Lagos governor made objective observations, according to Akari Jolu. And then governors meet again over 614 billion naira bailout deductions on page 18 of the Punch newspaper. A woman herbalist others convicted of dealing in human parts. 
That's so How gruesome. That is, it's as gruesome as that. Okay, it's on page five, please. Uh, grab a copy of the Punch newspaper. Seven killed in Lagos uh, court clash on page 13. Ehe PDP plans another neck meeting on page 22. And CP orders inspectors arrest over a quiet bomb widow's killing on pages four and five. And lastly, Nigeria's doctor patient ratio is 1.3 by one by 3,500, that's according to NUC on page 19. Okay, there seem to be more stories here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he, I don't know, I just, you want to say something? Yes, I was okay, just going yes. so so we'll to come to you most definitely. Sorry, I was going to look at the, um, just a quick comment on the refineries. I know mm -hmm. I was privileged to visit one of the refineries uh, a few months ago. Okay, tell I us know, what you saw. Yeah, so right, to be honest, it, it's only fair because this under maintenance at the moment is the mm -hmm. LMA refinery, mm -hmm. and so it's Port refinery. So that that is that may actually have a big a bearing on uh, why there's such a loss right now because it's actually not really functioning at the moment. Okay. So I know the big the big uh, earners are typically the Kaduna and the and, and LMA, mm -hmm. but both of them, well at least I know for for sure Port is under. yeah still under, and the last, I think the last eight, it has an 18 month period for TAM as they call it. Okay. So the time period right now is 18 months, and that will obviously be reflected. And why the losses have been put. Mm, it's good to give us that uh, perspective. So it well, makes sense. Well, I, I look at the story. The, it's not only Paracord. Mm -hmm. It is a cumulative loss for the three mm. refineries. That's mm -hmm. Kaduna, Wari, and Paracord. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then their revenue was very low as well. Mm -hmm. They had about 62 point something billion revenue. And their That's running cool. cost was almost 192 billion. Oh, wow. So, and what Pengersons was saying that the senior staff mm. of the gas uh, workers, mm -hmm. they're saying federal government needs to stop subsidy and use that money to fix the, the refineries. refineries and make them work at optimum. Because what you say, which I agree, they're not functioning at, as they're supposed and to you function. You don't expect to get anything. Yes, yeah, and you're not going to get anything if they're not functioning at their full capacity. Mm -hmm. So what Pengistan is saying that rather than dilly dally about either stopping subsidy or not they should stop subsidy and just fix this refinery and then let's do more yeah okay were well, you going to say something no i was just going to agree with what he's saying okay yeah. all right uh, in the interest of time i think we're going to move away from this and just go to the vanguard newspaper and yeah. which is the last paper again it says uh, Nigeria on alert as China's mystery coronavirus spreads on page 22. And then uh, Trump considers travel ban on Nigeria and others on page 39. The same story. Mm. Border closure, price of rice rises by 27% in five months. That's according to MBS. Wow. Amoteko, Afeni Ferrari, Wayuts, Oyetola, and others back to Nibu. We agree with him, according to Afeni Ferrari. Please find out. That story is on page five of the Vanguard newspaper. Adoke in court. And then um, we have seven soldiers killed in Iswap attack on page 10. North Central governors and stakeholders adopt community policing on page 37 of the Vanguard newspaper. And Anglican bishops reject Imo verdict as CGN to resign. And that's on page 34. That's the only story we're going to that's We'll take one story. So what, what do you want to intervene? Well, uh, for me, it's going to be a call on our religious leaders. Why is the Anglican bishop calling on the CGN to resign based on the Imo mm. verdict? It's not in their place. If how, you how, how do you mean it's not in their place? Yeah, you're a religious leader, you're not a political leader. Uh, so are you implying that... That the church is playing politics? That's what I'm implying. There's, been, so? there's been so much about Reverend Mbaka being political. Mm. So now the Anglican bishops, now not just one person, like the old, uh, what do you call it, uh, church now, is coming out to say the CGN should resign because of the Supreme Court judgment? No, it shouldn't be. I'm not in support of this judgment totally. Okay. Because judgment, the judgment was based on what was presented. Mm -hmm. We might not like it, it as, as people. We might have issues with the direction it's gone. But the challenge is this. What did the, did the PDP lawyers, did they present a counter-argument 
before the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. which I don't think they did. So you're, all, you're uh, just trying to understand your line of argument yeah. is that the church should not wade in, in the, political matters. Is, is that what over involvement? Saying? I think yeah. maybe he's trying to talk about the separation of church yeah. and state. Yes. Okay. So the, that's what I mean. The over involvement yes, of church, church in, in uh, politics. Yeah, which that's is what, fine. There's yeah. a history of that as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just thinking real quickly, uh, the UK Africa Investment Summit and uh, a lot of a lot of our leaders, the political leaders, are actually not even in the country at the moment. They're mm -hmm. all in London right now, being courted and in a series of courts, courtships from Chap Japan to China, Russia. Now we're, ha we're having the UK court trust. They had the, historically, they're the financial district of the world. So we, we, are, we understand why there's a big focus on trying to get a lot of um, uh, countries um, uh, countries listed mm. and all the private uh, companies listed and uh, with, in terms of investment pouring into um, Nigeria. Mm. So. Yeah, we hope they, they come out successful. All right, and that's where we're going to wrap it. Thank yeah. you very much, Femi. Thank You're you welcome. very much, Ify, for always being here and helping to understand and make sense of this. We'll do this again uh, tomorrow, same time, here on Plus TV Africa. I am Mama Kaoku. Have yourselves a great day ahead of you.